Good morning and welcome to In and Around Lake Forest. Uh, the show is brought to you twice a month from the Lake Forest Chamber of Commerce. My name is Steve Smith. And today we're going to be interviewing a gentleman who has actually been on the show a number of years ago, but he's back in a brand new role. His name is Doug Serbo. And uh, this year he is the Lake Forest Chamber City Mayor. Uh, he took, uh, took office here at the beginning of the year. He's been on city council for the last three years. He was uh, voted in in 2020. So now it's his, uh, his turn to be uh, the leader of the, uh, of the city council and the city of Lake Forest. So I'm really, really glad to have him on today So he, because he's going to share with us a lot of what uh, Lake Forest is looking to do, which I think is important if you live here and if you're doing business here. Um, Doug and his wife, Kathy, are residents of Lake Forest. They live in Portola Hills. They've been here for 37 years. Uh, Doug is also um, from uh, a, a retired Marine vet. Uh, he served here in the Marine base in El Toro before that was um, disbanded here in early 2000. Uh, he also has a very long list of community activities that he's currently involved in and has been in the past. So I can't think of a better gentleman to be at the helm of our city than a gentleman who has been so deeply involved and committed to, to Lake Forest and everything that goes on in Lake Forest here. So let's bring him on now and uh, get, a, get, get a little background from him and then we'll, uh, we'll hear about what he does and what, he, what he's teeing up for, uh, for the city for the future. Doug? Yes, can you hear me okay, Steve? Uh, yes, you're coming through. We just need to get your smiling face on the screen and we'll be ready to roll. Okay, let's see. Where's my audio? Start audio. Right next Select. to it, there should be a video camera. It's probably got a red flash through it. Yeah. There I'm we go. <laughs> got it? Nope, you were on and now you're off. Did you double click it? There we ah, go. Now perfect. We got it. <laughs> perfect. Well, hey, listen, Doug, thanks for being on and welcome to In and Around Lake Forest. We're really happy to have you with us today. Um, I just spent a few moments letting everybody know about your new mayoral role that is starting out here in 2023. So uh, we're just glad to be able to have you on and learn from you about what the city is moving into for the rest of this year and beyond. Okay, well, great. Uh, thanks for inviting me to be here again today. And then, as you know, and many people may not know, the city council actually votes who becomes the mayor for each year. We share that responsibility. So this is my year as a third year on the council. So I'm excited about doing that. and got quite a few things to kind of cover today, different areas of interest, I think, from community services and public safety and things like that. So if it's okay for me to kind of start with that, or did you have a well, particular agenda? I, I'm, I'm personally curious, and, and there might, might be other people that are thinking the same thing. How many other cities in Orange County, if you just happen to know, nominate their mayor from within the city council, as opposed to having the mayor being you know, an elected position? That's really a good question. And I was actually invited to go to a Rotary meeting last Wednesday in Orange. And so I met the mayor of Orange, Dan Slater, and he was telling me, of course, the residents there, they elect their mayor person. And so I don't know out of the 32 Orange County cities, how many of them do this. I think the majority of them do it this way. Okay. And I think it's just a matter of, you know, you don't want to have any on our council in a way, the, the impression that we want to give to people is that the mayor doesn't have any more power or influence or things like that. We run the meetings. We, we go to chamber of commerce, ribbon cutting ceremonies, <laughs> we sign more checks. Uh, we, you know, as the mayor, we do some of those duties. So yeah, there's an important role to play there, but it's not like Karen Bass in Los Angeles, where you have a whole different set of uh, right. you know, power arrangements there. So I, uh, I think the majority of Orange County um, cities, like you were asking, do follow this kind of a, a pattern, a smaller okay. city. Size. All right. Yeah. All right. So look, let's um, let's start out because I know you had teed up a couple of topics that you wanted to go over. But let's start out by just talking about what what is ahead of Lake Forest in terms of projects and developments, because I can, I mean, I haven't been here quite as long as you, but not too far off. Uh, and when we moved out here in the early 90s, it, it, it's a completely different city today than it was back then in terms of services and amenities and just overall development. So kind of what, are, what should we be looking for going forward? Okay, yeah. So me talking about some of our uh, community development and some of those planning things coming on. So just a, a couple of quick things is that 
um, you, you, we're going to have a, a new code amendment regarding industrial uses. So currently we have a couple of applicants that are looking at some of the projects here in Lake Forest to, to redo these things. And as the involvement of all these businesses change, we need to update our industrial code uh, requirements and things like that. So we're kind of in that process. It's early on and now, but we're going to be looking at what other cities have done. And there's a big push right now toward logistics and warehouses and whatnot. So we've had a couple of people approach us about doing that. And so there's a lot involved you know, with that evaluation. So we're just on the initial stage that we're going to have public hearings and, and more feedback and then do some traffic studies and all right away things. So uh, that's uh, something that we'll be just looking at here. One of the big things in terms of industrial uses. All right. Um, so, but, well, all right, so let me just throw in a question here. So for the average citizen and people who have businesses here, what does that, what's the impact of that whole process on people who live here? Good question. <clears throat> so from a, I mean, nobody's going to say, hey, I absolutely want more warehouses and more logistical companies to come in here with 18 wheelers uh, and just tear up the streets and, and more traffic. And maybe we have to modify some of the intersections to accommodate all that. Nobody's going to say, yeah, we want that. But the idea is, you know, there's a, of course, a lot of these manufacturers, they're looking at better ways to get goods and services to clients with that last mile or two. And right. so Irvine, if you go to Irvine area, you can see they've got a big push and, and added a lot of that kind of stuff. So, you know, we're going to be cautious. We're going to understand what the, the, the needs are of the, of the city in terms of delivering those kind of things. And then what the homeowner feedback and residential and businesses in terms of, of that. So, I mean, we currently already have, you know, some of these warehouses in place. There's 18 wheelers that are coming into our city currently. We're just going to take a very cautious approach on this and there there is things already in place in terms of ordinances for how high buildings can be and and what kind of code enforcement that we have related to you know trucking and, and whatnot so this is going to be a, a well, process that we're look at that all right so don't we have kind of a a, a a test case if you will in our neighbor city mission viejo because they have an amazon facility over there uh, and I think it used to, I'm trying to remember what company owned that facility before they moved in. Uh, but I mean, is that not something that the city can look at to say, gee, here's something that's already up and running, you know, what has that done to them? Exactly. And so we've already been in touch with neighboring cities and gathering information. And, you know, the, the city staff does a really good job of gathering details and information. And we do, we take a you know, rides out to these different locations. We see what's going on, what the impact would be and what the pros and cons are, and then ultimately decide what's in the best interest of Lake Forest. All right. So, so logistics, warehousing, that kind of infrastructure to whatever degree we allow it to develop here is, is one big area. So I think that's, that's important because I do, I do kind of keep up with other surrounding counties. And I know there are some counties that are just inundated with logistics and, Sometimes, you know, you get to a tipping point and it's now it's not really benefiting the community the way they thought because there's too much of it. So I'm glad we're taking a cautious approach to that. Um, what other kinds of infrastructure developments is the city looking at? OK, well, we have this uh, local hazard mitigation plan. So that's going to be where we're looking at uh, potentially dangerous situations in the city in terms of creeks and rail crossings and other types of situations that might have a severity of incidents that might occur. So, you know, we're going to have, uh, you know, businesses, residents help us out on that too. So our Lake Forest survey is going to discuss those particular things. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of more uh, present, I guess, would be we've got the affordable housing issue, which is every city has to deal with. And so you've uh, probably noticed over there by the post office on Altora Road, we have the Mountain View project, which is due to be completed uh, this summer. So that's a 71 unit project. And it's uh, National Corps who's doing this. They've done some really great projects around, you know, the state. And right. so this one, this one's going to help with that. And and it's going to be uh, again. There's going to be an on-site manager. It's going to be very strictly monitored on a monthly basis. Uh, they've planned for the you know the parking and limiting you know the number of spaces that you know people have for that. And so that's going to help address you know some of that uh, that housing situation to uh, give folks an opportunity to to live and work nearby. You know, here in Lake Forest. So uh, that project, well, uh, Mountain View, is coming up here. So, so I think, if I'm not correct, that's the first one, correct, that, that we, we've done? 
because how many more are on the map to be <laughs> sprinkled around the city of Lake Forest? Yeah, this is a whole complicated thing, and I'll just kind of do an overview on this. The, the state has imposed on every city what they call the RENA number, the Regional Housing Needs Assessment. And what that means is that every city is mandated by the, the state to come up with a plan on how you're going to provide a certain number of units. Now, we're actually in negotiation with this because we think our number is still way too high, but it's 3,283 units of affordable housing we've hmm. thus far satisfied uh, i think it's around three or four hundred and then plus you know these that are coming on and then we've also submitted a plan that it doesn't mandate that we we have to put in these units it means we have to we've mandated a plan on how to do this and then you know the idea is to look at how do we modify existing locations to come up and accommodate something so we've identified five different areas in the, the city uh, that satisfies our arena uh, submission. But um, in addition to these 71 units behind the, the post office of the Mountain View project, there's also up here in Portola Hills in my uh, neck of the woods, uh, another senior affordable living apartments project that's right outside the Iron Ridge development that okay. is in process. And that's also gonna be probably coming online for occupancy you know, this summer. And that's about 57 units, uh, if I remember correctly. So, all right, so you're talking a grand total, which I guess you, you guys are debating or, or, or you know, of around 3,200 units. Given the number of, of living dwelling units in the city of Lake Forest now, what, what does that look like? How many do we currently have between houses and condos and, you know, any place where somebody could live? What do you, do you have off the top of your head some idea about, because I'm, I'm trying to weigh the two to figure out 3,200 sounds like a lot, but given what we have here in total, is it that much? Right. And again, that, that 400 unit number is what we have that satisfies this plan. The idea is that if we submit this plan and we have a way to satisfy the state in terms of their requirement for these RENA numbers, then we maintain local control. If we are not compliant and we don't submit this information for their approval, then the state can actually come in and say, you know what, we're going to take over. We're going to take uh, the town center up in Foothill Ranch and we're going to tear down these buildings and then we're going to have developers come in and we're going to be in control of supplying affordable wow. housing. Do not want that to ever happen. <laughs> so we've done a really good job right. with uh, uh, you know, Gail Ackerman and our, our staff is incredible at this, and she's done a wonderful job. And so we're we're uh, doing our final submission uh, on this to get approved. And so we're, we're we're looking good on that whole standpoint. But again, whether we get to 3,283 units, I mean, it's going to be up to developers who also want to be able to produce these kind of units as well. So right. it's it's a it's a very tricky, complicated type of situation, but we are very much in compliance and way ahead of other cities in this realm. What's the what's the overall timeline if we were to ever get to 3,283 units? How many years out is, you know, because let's face it, the government isn't the fastest group on the planet. Um, how long is it going to take for this to to be completed and have these occupied by families? Another good question. I, I don't have that the date off the top of my head. I think it's it's way out. There's not like you have to hit 3283 by 2027 or anything like that. It's just uh, these multiple drafts that we do and seeing how we are we making progress that we have to submit these uh, you know progress reports, if you will, to the state. Uh, and so as long my understanding is as long as you're doing that then they're going to stay out of, uh, you know, out of our business and uh, do this locally. Uh, gotcha. But I don't think there's not a hard date that this has to be achieved is my mm. understanding. Okay. All right. So we've got um, affordable housing projects in the works. So what else is on the docket for improvements here in Lake Forest? Okay. So in terms of public works uh, up here in Portola Hills, we had a lot of feedback on the Portola Park, where we have three pickleball courts, we have a volleyball court, and we have three dog parks, which are uh, very uh, much used, which is great. And the residents, when I go down there, they love it. We've actually had a pickleball tournament that the city actually helped coordinate. And so that's really a, a strong new sports activity people want. But at in the summer or in the wintertime at five o'clock, it's dark. So we, we a few months ago, we actually passed the uh, procurement for lighting at oh. Portola Park. And so that's due to be installed 
in March uh, this year. So in a couple of months, we'll have lights at all three of those locations so people can play pickleball after five o'clock when it gets dark or take their dog. And we're, we're going to decide on, you know, what the time frame we're, we're sensitive to what residents are saying in the area. We've had a lot of feedback on that. So, you know, it, it might be an eight o'clock or a nine o'clock, you know, the lights go out so it doesn't bother people after hours and things like that. But it'll be, you know, get a nice amenity to that park to be able to provide additional functionality and, and fun for people to participate there. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So um, recreational um, wise, anything else from an infrastructure or an improvement standpoint? Yeah, we're doing uh, continuing with our, our, our CIP, our capital improvement projects, where we're updating uh, different parks. We've done a number of those already, but other ones are coming online. Vintage, Sundowner, Borrego, uh, Rancho Serrano, Regency. Those are all improvements that are anticipated to be completed here in the first half of 2023. And that's going to mark the completion of the neighborhood park renovation that began in 2017. So wow. uh, major improvements to 10 parks. Uh, nice. So really, we want to make sure that we keep our city uh, vibrant and then the parks are improved to uh, with the latest um, you know safety elements and uh, just give them a fresh look and and add new amenities to it as well cool all right so i'm curious about something more over on the commercial side um currently on el toro and raymond we've got that uh, shopping center that's getting a facelift uh much needed facelift by the way um, and there have been other places in the commercial sector of downtown Lake Forest that have already been kind of revamped or completely, you know, scuttled and rebuilt. But we have some older shopping centers kind of sprinkled throughout. And I guess I, maybe it's just me, but I'm just wondering if those things are in need of upgrading so that the whole city just looks newer and fresher, whose responsibility is that? I mean, does the city drive that? Is that the landlord who may live in Florida? <laughs> you know, how does that how does that come about where shopping centers are are getting tagged for a complete facelift and a renewal? Yeah, so I would probably think that Public Works is the one who's actively going around. And for example, you know, we've got medians along Bacon Baffin um, Bay that are are being improved. And then we've also got El Toro Road and Portola Santa Margarita Parkway adding dual eastbound left hand turn lanes. And so there's going to be some expansions and some improvements, you know, there. So there's a, a number of projects that are on the books, but it really kind of falls, I uh, believe, under the you know the Public Works banner. So if people, residents, businesses, they are noticing something that needs a type of improvement, then we can address that to our public works department. And of course, uh, Tom Wheeler is our director uh, of that group and uh, falls under his area in terms of you know, taking a look at what kind of major infrastructure elements we need to take a look at if there's issues in the city. Hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So if we can switch gears, uh, what can you tell us about Lake Forest's financial picture? Yeah, another great uh, shining star there for us. And then I was just on the audit committee that myself and council member Mark Tedemer, we serve along with our staff and we meet on a regular basis uh, every quarter or more often, depending on, on how that works. And so the, the short story is the city of Lake Forest is in great shape financially. And this is contrast with other cities uh, in California is that, you know, we're one that we, we say we're debt free. And I got a distinction last night, we were talking about when we're in lease agreements with certain types of recurring revenue, like software or technology type things, it shows up as a debt on there. So mm. we have that. But in terms of our pensions, which are very limited, those are all overfunded. Uh, we don't, we have, we call ourselves debt free. Uh, we have all of our reserves of $53 million that's been funded uh, for, for this year as well. So uh, the nice thing about Lake Forest is people here, we have a 98.7% rate of people paying their property taxes, which is wow. really incredible. So that's of one, of the, you know, the, one of the sources, of course, of, of revenue. But you know, we're already working on our budgets that come up uh, right now for approval in, in June. So we're going to survey our residents and finding out what's important to them. And we have, you know, three strategic plan goals. We talk about how our city is well planned, attractive and safe. We talk about how our city is engaged and informed and technologically current. So you're going to see some infrastructure related to Internet access and options there. 
We talk about our city as sustainable and well-run with committed people. And so each of these budgeted items kind of ties back into one of these three goals. And you know, again, we're a contract city. So a large portion of our, our budget goes to public safety and, and other things that, you know, associated with that. And I was just talking to Deborah Rose, our city manager. She said, yeah, a lot of cities, you know, their 90% of their funds go toward their uh, con their their people that they have in, the, in their city organization and their police services and their fire services where, you know, we only have 20% of our funds, our revenues that go towards supporting the city staff. And then we have contract elements uh, throughout the other things for police services and uh, fire authority. So from that standpoint, the, the people who came way before us and decided we're going to be a contract city and not have to bear the brunt of these, the, uh, these heavy pensions and this expense that uh, soaks up a lot of the revenue. So from that standpoint, that's the reason why that we're such a good position and very conservative financial uh, hmm. folks in our uh, department. We just um, uh, hired a, a new uh, consultant for taking some of our excess reserves and investing that in something that, again, complies with state and federal laws, but also gives us an opportunity to kind of grow those reserves that we have on short-term basis. So again, the short answer, the city of Lake Forest from a financial standpoint is one of the tops in the state. So you mentioned a lot about us being a contract city, when, and I understand that we don't have our own public services like, you know, fire and police and you know, all those other things, you know, we, we arrive, you know, we have contracts with the sheriff's department and things like that. Is that just because, I mean, let's face it in South County, we're, we're on the smaller side of the cities that are here. Is that just, is that a thing that you do because of the size or should other cities be looking at the same thing to be more financially, you know, fiscally sound? I think that they should actually look at our, our model. And I don't think it's a function of the size of the city. I mean, uh, I'll maybe push back a little bit on the fact that Lake Forest has 86,000 residents, and we're we're not one of the smaller cities in South Orange County. Actually, we we have a pretty good size in terms of our our residential uh, number of people here. So it's not really a function of size. It's a it's a matter of okay, do we want to uh, take on this responsibility for a fire department or a police department, and then have to scale up and scale down and fund pensions and do all those kind of things versus we contract that out. It's really a, a smart financial model in terms of what I've seen. Yeah, no, I look, I would agree with you. I think we have a great relationship with our sheriff's department and I, you know, they had that new office right over there by the, by our civic center. So, I mean, they might as well be, you know, they're, they're right here, <laughs> right in the middle of us. So it's a great, uh, I think it's a great uh, relationship to have. Um, all right. So, um, yeah. If I can talk about a couple of programs, so I want to make sure we get in, you know, in time there. So um, if I can talk about a couple of programs that actually helps our residents, can I do Super. that? Absolutely. Okay, so the first one, we have this gift card program, and I just got an update on this again last night. So if you go to our website, lakeforestca.gov slash gift card, or just go to our website and you'll see the Shop and Dine program. What we did with the American Rescue Plan Act, some of those dollars is we said, how do we help businesses in Lake Forest kind of come back from COVID? Now we know that a lot of people have really done well coming back from that and recovered, but we thought there's a couple of different ways that we could take that those monies and help mm -hmm. businesses and residents. So we have this program where you go to the website and you can buy a 25 or a 50 or a hundred dollar gift card. And we double that, we BOGO, buy one, get one. And you will go to one of 40 businesses and we're adding businesses all the time. So you go to Avo Bravo, you go to Kuka's, you go to Handel's Ice Cream, you go to Brew Grill, you go to Bagels and Brew, you go to uh, pet stores, you go to car repair places that we have on the website. And you show them either a paper copy or on your phone, a digital MasterCard. And then you can spend those dollars. So for example, uh, I just bought a hundred dollar gift card again this morning. And so I've got $200 to spend anywhere on those different places. So basically you're getting a hundred dollars at, at no cost to you or a $50 card or a 25. Nice. You can buy up to two of those cards now. Really great for the business. They don't pay anything for this. The residents don't pay anything for this. We pick up all the costs of administering this program. Fantastic. And I think that's super. Um, 
is there an expiration date to this or does does it just run as long as you have money on the card right so you have a hundred dollar card and you have a hundred dollar bonus card the bonus card has to be spent within six months but uh, they're actually going to advise you say hey you're coming up uh, five months Steve on your uh, your BOGO card and uh, do you want to roll that over or do you want to spend it we're just giving you a heads up so they're doing a lot of things to make sure that you don't ever lose that but so um, when you get involved in this you're going to end up you're going to buy a hundred dollar gift card the city's going to give you a so you're going to end up having two gift cards basically yes that's correct okay, okay. yeah all right and so like i say we're adding two to five businesses every week it's only been out for a month and the update last night was that we've already had allocated uh let's see what was the number i had here uh it's like uh 160 thousand dollars have already been pumped into the local economy. So businesses love this idea and then residents are loving it. They're using it because they're saving a whole bunch of money. They're getting, you know, some free dollars or well, it's their for tax sure. dollars essentially, you know, to use in local. So it's only good for Lake Forest businesses. And then we're just opening it up this week to people who may work here, but live in Yorba Linda, for example. Okay. So people will take advantage of spending money here as well. So, so we're excited are, about this program. Are, are we the first to do this or no. are there other cities doing this? No, other cities actually did this because we were looking at different ways to take these monies and we were thinking about, okay, we'll go to businesses. We'll ask them, what was your pre-COVID revenue? What was your during COVID revenue? How much did you lose? Uh, we'll issue you a check. Very complicated, very time consuming. We saw what other cities were doing with this program. We got it online quick. And then we've actually allocated up to $500,000 for this program. The first 150 has pretty much already been done in, in a month. So I wow. don't see, I, I see that $500,000 getting eaten up quick by before summertime. So if you wanna save money, you wanna you know, support local uh, Lake Forest businesses, go there today and get that card done now because it's, it's not going to last. All right. So you go on the lakeforestca.gov website. Is there some kind of special um, advertisement or something on there to, to get your attention so you know where to sign up or where? Because I've been on that site before and there's a lot of stuff on there. So I don't want yeah. people not to be able to find it. Use the If you go to the main site and in the search bar, just type in shop. Oh, and it'll take you to a page that talks about the shop and dine, and then it'll, it'll launch you off to where you enter your information and you know pay and get your uh, car. You'll get an email with the information on how to use it, and then just have it on your phone. And it's a digital MasterCard. You show the number to the merchant. They go ahead and they type it in, and there you go. Cool. All right. So, what other programs is the city sponsoring or you're yes. working on? So the catalytic converter program is going to be launched this week or next week, they told me last night. And so this is something where we see about 10 catalytic converter thefts per month in Lake Forest. So the program that we have now will allow people to go to local car shops and they can have their VIN number either painted or etched onto their catalytic converter. And we will uh, offer up to $125 voucher for residents to do that or if they want to put in a more significant shield that they can install on their their uh, cars then we have a 250 dollars voucher for that mm. so if people are concerned about that and from a public safety standpoint and we know it's a an issue somewhat here in lake forest and then 10 catalytic converters uh stolen per month then here's something that we're participating um, again, using our ARPA money with local resident or local car uh, shop companies to be able to take this as a deterrent for that particular issue. Isn't the state also doing something about that by creating a, 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 a disincentive on the other end for thieves to be able to sell these converters somewhere else? I thought we, I read something about them working on a law that would prevent that from happening. Well, we here in Lake Forest instituted a new ordinance that made possession of a catalytic converter without proof of purchase or ownership a $1,000 fine. Mm. So we couldn't make it a felony, but it is a, a misdemeanor and a $1,000 fine if uh, somehow you, know, you, you get caught with you know, five catalytic converters in your truck or your trunk and you can't produce documentation that says that you own this and then also there's been additional pressure put on local car shops or recycling places to say you know what you, you get somebody who shows up with these things you have an obligation to report this to the orange county sheriff department so gotcha. 
we're doing those kind of things to help deter, you know, people from stealing these items. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Cause that's a, man, that is an expensive replacement. So I'm sure people are going to be happy knowing that, that there's a deterrent mixed into that. Absolutely. And that's again, information on our website that can be found there too. And then if I can maybe finish with some fun stuff, just to kind of promote the Snowfest event that's happening at Pittsburgh park this Saturday, right in my and, backyard. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, hopefully it's nice and chilly enough to keep the snow going all day long. Cause it goes from uh, 10 30 until about uh, 2 45. And I will be there sliding down the hill. There'll be other food vendors. You, know, you can purchase the, uh, the tickets there. So it's a great family event. And lots of local organizations that are uh, also volunteering you know, to be there. So there'll be booths, there'll be food vendors, there'll be other fun events you know, to be uh, doing there. And then also being able to slide down the hill. So we encourage everybody to come on out and participate in that Snowfest event at Pittsburgh Park this Saturday. And what time does that start? Starts at 10, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Okay. Very cool. Yep. All right. Well, listen, uh, you have been just a plethora of information. I, <laughs> I love that it. word. Uh, you know, people, look, I, people, I think, you know, in, in every city, they, they just kind of deal with what's, what they see and what they do on a daily basis. And a lot of this stuff is really important. And a lot of times people just don't know about it until they run smack, you know, face into it. So I'm glad you, you were able to come here and kind of give us an idea of what's happening with some major initiatives here for the city. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, well, thank you, Stephen. I know this Chamber of Commerce just had a meeting there last week with some new businesses that come and check it out. We've got some uh, ribbon cutting ceremonies coming up on Friday up here in Footer Ranch at the center, uh, that great restaurant, and continue your support with the local businesses. And we hear all the time how our Lake Forest Chamber is doing a much better job than a lot of other people. So kudos to you guys for getting the word out and promoting you know, Lake Forest businesses. So we really appreciate that partnership. Well, we, we are blessed to have enough uh, of very dedicated people to, to say nothing of uh, Mary Visconti, our CEO, who works tirelessly behind the scenes to put a lot of this stuff together. I'm just the face. I go out there and cut the <laughs> ribbon, you know, but, uh, but, you know, everybody works well together. And I think the local businesses really appreciate it. And the fact that we have such a good relationship with the city you know, not only the, uh, the you know, the, the, the manager's office, but, but the city council, I think just makes it a very nice package for people that live here and do business here. So I want to thank you personally for your time on the city council. And now that you're, you're in the mayor's spot, I'll, I'm sure I'll be seeing a whole lot more of you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, round of applause to all that stuff right there. Yeah, there, there you go. All right. There you go. <laughs> all right, listen, folks, thanks for being with us today. We appreciate you uh, coming. And uh, in two weeks, we will be back in with another, uh, another interview, another, uh, another small business doing business here in Lake Forest. But again, wanted to thank uh, our new mayor, Doug Serbo, for his time here to kind of give us an idea of where the city's going. Uh, I'm personally very, uh, very happy to be a part of the city. And, and, you know, I just think it's been a long time coming, but the city has really become a shining star. And it's, it's no thanks to you and folks like you that have, uh, have spent a lot of time helping to make uh, Lake Forest a great place to live and do and, and to work. Yep, I would uh, exemplify those comments and just thank you very much for mentioning that too. But uh, thanks very much for our time today. And, you know, we'll catch you somewhere out there soon. Maybe it's Snowfest. All right, folks, listen, that brings us to the end of today's show. Uh, keep watching the Lake Forest Chamber Facebook page because that's where we'll tell you about upcoming events and certainly who's going to be on the uh, in and around Lake Forest in the future. So take care. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you soon.